the EcoFlow Delta, their 1800 watt max, I think it's like 1300 watt nor, nor, nominal. Thank you. SUV stealth camping in the city. And again, I could power my red power bikes battery. Yeah, please like, share, comment, and uh, also consider joining membership. Oh, that poor tree. I don't know why they just don't push it back. I think it's still uh, it's still uh, able to live. I think it'll still be able to live. I think it'll be able to live. They just gotta put it back into the roots and let it just grow. If they leave it like that, it's gonna definitely die. But you know, hey, hey, what do you know? All right. I'm just headed back home. All right, headed back home. Clouds look a little dark. There's a very low chance of rain, but uh, I don't want to chance it, you know. I'm just trying to get out, ride the bike. It is not that hot, not that humid. Even though it says it's in the 90s, it doesn't feel like it. The humidity level is very low, feels low. Plus, I'm wearing my Flexi Freeze vest, so. So in my last video, I talked about uh, Hurricane Nicholas and my issues with the generator. So after this experience, you know, generators are useful. When you need power, they can deliver, but storing that generator long-term, sometimes it gets old or you need to exercise the generator every, every year or every few months. Otherwise, if you store it for a long time, and my mistake is I put, I left it with gas in the tank. That was a big mistake. My, the younger me didn't realize that. The older me, I know that, but <laughs> what can I do? I can't travel back in time. So there are some flaws of, or shortcomings of generators. I would still have a generator, but what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, I'm going to take it to get it repaired, if possible. I'm going to try to get a new tank, if possible. If not, I'm just going to go and bypass the whole gasoline tank, and I'm going to do a conversion, a propane natural gas conversion. So that way I could just hook up my propane. I'm probably not going to do a natural gas, but I could just hook up my propane, and I just need it for a couple hours. I mean, generators, backup generators are portable generators. Gas powered portable generator. Even dedicated generators, standby generators. They're not meant to like run all day, all night. They're not designed. They are for backup emergencies a few hours at a time, half a day. But eight, 10, 20 hours, 30 hours, most of them aren't set up that way. You'll run out of gas, but if you keep doing that, you're gonna, you're gonna kill that generator. Then you won't be out. You'll be definitely out of power for sure. So what I decided to do was get a EcoFlow power station. I got the EcoFlow Delta. I ordered it. I know it won't do me any good now, but, but, uh, the problem with generators is you don't really use them unless you're out of middle of nowhere and you're and you have it with you and that's what you're doing all the time. You're you know you're boondocking is another reason. But if you don't boondock, you don't work in the middle of nowhere where there is no electricity. You know, for the most part, you're just storing in a generator in your garage. And like I said, you need to exercise it. You need to make sure it's working. The oil is good. All right. You got to change out the oil. You got to exercise it. 
because when you need it, you want to make sure it works. And you don't want to store gas in the gas tank. Again, the younger me didn't know that. The older me, the current me, I know that. At the time, you know, just forgot about it, oh well. I live and learn. I can still salvage that, that little Harbor Freight generator I bought almost seven years ago. So again, I can, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to convert it to a propane natural gas. That way I don't need this, I don't need gas. Uh, I always carry around propane tanks because I use it to burn weed. Not, not, not 420 weed, not marijuana, like the grass weeds. And my neighbor's like tree that keeps them encroaching over my backyard. And just getting, just weed control, plant control, just burn. I do a control burn. I torch the vegetation so it just keeps everything at bay, even on my own yard. So uh, that's why I have propane. I don't really barbecue, but I do have, I do have like a stove in the backyard. Oh, butterfly. So I do have like a stove in the backyard. I, I jerry-rigged it. I jerry-rigged it. I took two, oh, I took two uh, barbecue pits that had stoves and put them together. So I have a two stove top burner outside work up, that can work off for propane, which I haven't used in five years, by the way. It's just more convenient to cook inside, <laughs> especially in the summer. And even in the winter, you're cold. Why would you want to cook out there? The only time I would really cook something outside is like if I had food that really stinks up the house. You know, there's always that food that stinks up the house, but tastes so good. Yum, yum. That's when I would cook out, but I don't do too much of that. Most of the food I cook, man, it smells good when you cook it, tastes good when you eat it. So I've got an EcoFlow Delta. I know there's like a lot of other ones out there, but I just chose EcoFlow Delta because it's fast recharge time. Because I'm thinking, and I'll do a review on it. Hopefully I can get a, an affiliate link with, with uh, EcoFlow. And... Uh, Anyways, uh, I bought it with my own money. I just, I did a lot of research and I just chose EcoFlow because I think that works best for me. So I wasn't uh, sponsored or paid or <laughs> no one pushed me into it. I did a lot of research, watched a lot of videos, weighed the pros and cons of, oh, <laughs> weighed the pros and cons of power stations. Man, you know, when my friend got hit by a, a mail truck one time, my, uh, he got a million dollars. He bought a Hummer, the Hummer H3 or H2. No, that was actually the H1. It was a long time ago. But man, he had to pay for it in hospital bills. So, but he got a lot of money. I think he got like a million dollars. Anyways, generators, power portable. Well, this is a portable power station, quote unquote, portable power station. And, uh, oh man, I'm too far ahead. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. Put my foot down on this. Ugh. So, the EcoFlow Delta, they're 1800 watt max. I think it's like 1300 watt nominal. Uh, what it'll do is it will power my fridge for, I, I estimated about 30 hours, which is about the time it took to get the power restored. And my recent uh, blackout here from Hurricane Nicholas, but also it has a quick charge function that I guess if you use a generator, you could charge everything back up to 100%. It would take about an hour to two hours because generators are noisy and loud. Like I said, when I got back home, I didn't want to leave the house unattended. So after we got the hotel, my wife and kids are there. My wife went back to the house, cooked dinner, brought, brought dinner back to the hotel. After I ate dinner, I went back to the house because I said, I'm just going to go back to the house. I have, we have like, we have uh, uh, flashlights that will last through the night. I'm okay with that. 
I just don't want to leave the house unattended. So I get back and the neighbor behind me in my backyard has a generator going off. It wasn't as loud. The, my neighbor to the left had a generator, which was very loud, which was very loud. And uh, yeah, and he kept that thing going all night. Now, I don't know if they bought it or rented it, rented the generators. Either way, it didn't last. By the time they got it and started using it, literally eight hours later, the power came back on. So generators are loud. So I don't want a loud generator running all night because now, let me tell you, I couldn't sleep. And I'm pretty sure my neighbor couldn't sleep because his generator was right in front of his house. It was, if I couldn't sleep, I'm pretty sure he couldn't sleep, nor could his wife and his children. Could nobody in that house could sleep because I couldn't sleep. And, and I put uh, I put the swimmer's earwax in my ear to to you know reduce the the decibels. I could barely hear it was background noise, but I still couldn't sleep because it was, you know you just it was loud. So that's why I got the EcoFlow Delta because it has a fast recharge. My thinking is if, obviously I don't have power, so I need to recharge the power station, the EcoFlow Delta. That's where the, that's where the, uh, thank you. That's where the, uh, the generator comes in. I'm not gonna jump, I, I, I'm not, positive that everything is firm out here so that's where the generator comes in you turn on the generator attach it to the EcoFlow before it gets dark let it run during the daytime top off the uh, EcoFlow Delta and let the uh, let the uh, EcoFlow Delta power the power station the power generator uh, run the refrigerator because really that's what that's what I we're really most concerned when a power goes out is the refrigerator because we don't want the food to spoil and it gets really stinky and messy everything starts melting ice cream the ice water all over the place so the refrigerator is what you really want minimal minimal refrigerator uh, air conditioning wasn't too bad because it, it was pretty cool. It looks like a lot of trees fell down. I see them I see a lot of stumps out here So So it's it's like over uh, what I What I end up buying The EcoFlow Delta cost me About fifteen hundred dollars with tax and shipping they have it on sale for two hundred dollars I'm sure it's retail price, but still so that included the solar panel. So I did get a solar panel with it just in case the generator didn't work. I could at least charge it solar. It would take a long time. It would take a long time, but at least I could like prolong the use of that power station. If all else fails, I can use solar if it's a sunny day. If, But even if it isn't a sunny day, I can still kind of use it. Um, you know, you could uh, use uh, initial power, the, I don't know, 20 hours, 10 hours, you know, whatever. You could use it during the day and then unplug it at night if I had, that's if I had no power. So, or use it at night and unplug it half the day just to get some charge or try to plug it in. The point is you could try to extend the life of the battery with some solar. So I did get the solar package. Now, the good thing is I use that Harbor Freight uh, battery. I use that Harbor Freight battery all the time because I always have a charge. So I use it to pump the air. I used to, but that's the same concept I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna use the EcoFlow Delta the same way. I'm gonna have it charged all the time. It's gonna become my UPS, my uninterrupted power supply. 
it's going to become my uninterrupted power supply for my computer, my where, where I do my video editing. Although I have a laptop, it has a battery, so it's not not a big deal. But I'm going to use it like that, so it's probably going to be plugged in. It's going to be used all the time. If I don't use it, it has a it has a shelf life. The the power, the electricity has a shelf life of a year in that thing. So, uh, and then again, for whatever reason, I it's, it's drained down and hasn't been used. It's drained out. It takes a few hours to power up from the AC wall. So if I know a storm's coming, bust it out, plug it in, let it charge up, let it top off, and just hope that the power doesn't go out. But if it does, you know, I have some, some backup power that doesn't require a generator. Uh, generators are great. I still have a generator, but you know, they there's some shortcomings. There are some downsides because most of the time you'll never use a generator except that one time where the power goes out. You know, and then storing it, you have to exercise it, change the oil. You have to make sure everything's working before the power goes out. Because once the power goes out and things aren't working, man, you're you're up a hill without a paddle. So once I get the, the generator, I'll do a review on it. And plus, <laughs> and plus, I've been eyeing these things because I want to do SUV stealth camping in the city or camping, SUV camping in the state parks or where, wherever. And having a battery system like the EcoFlow Delta, I could theoretically power a fridge, a portable fridge. I can power a core egg. I can power a microwave. Not at the same time, but one at a time. Literally, I can camp out of an SUV. I can have the modern convenience of an RV in an SUV. An SUV that would be my daily driver. Just a no-build SUV camper. Just go in there, use the power station. I don't know if I'm going to bring the microwave, but I know I can power a microwave. Uh, an induction cooktop. You can use an induction cooktop. So there you go. Uh, that's the other thing I wanted to get it for, was for that purpose. So it, it's going to... It was expensive. It was expensive. But overall, I think for how often I'm going to use it. And again, I can power my Rad Power Bikes battery. I don't know if it's very efficient, but I could power my Rad Power Bikes battery as well if I go out camping or whatever one night, weekend, or just traveling in general. You could also charge. You can charge the power station. Whoa. Oh, bugs. You can charge the power station with the DC outlet. So a lot of a lot of things you could do. Very versatile. Basically you just bought an RV. Or basically you can you can build an RV out of your SUV. Oh water. Water. Oh, So I, I could technically have a, a a van life without the van, which is awesome because I really don't want a van. I, I want a daily driver SUV that I can also convert to a camper, you know, do some urban stealth camping, do some long road trips without me staying in a hotel, you know, save some money. Uh, so, a lot of plans for this thing. A lot of plans. So, things are coming together. I'm, <laughs> I'm fantasizing hardcore, but this purchase is not fantasy. It's actually practical. It's very useful.
this purchase is very practical, very useful. And uh, yeah, I think it will be, it'll be used. I don't wanna get something and then not use it. And then when I need it, it turns out I haven't used it so long or I barely used it or I haven't maintained it that it doesn't even work when I need it. That's the worst. So anyways, yeah, please like, share, comment, leave a, leave a comment on uh, your situation. You ever had anything like that happen to you? Do you have a power station, a battery bank, uh, portable or uh, for the whole house? Let me know. And uh, also consider joining membership. A lot of great content here. Looks like somebody is working on their roof. They got some roof damage. Yeah, I got some roof damage too, but it's not serious. Some of the top layers of my shingles flew off. I'm gonna have to go on the roof, which really sucks. I hate going on the roof. But I just need to replace some shingles, which I've done before, but man, I hate going on the roof. So, but there wasn't any leaks. Just some of the top shingles flew off. I need to go up there and replace them. My fence fell over, or, or not my fence, but my fence did fall over, but uh, it, it uh, fell over to my neighbor's side, my backyard neighbor, the same one was the same guy that had the generator. You know what was funny is the guy, I was watching him when I came back home, I was watching him from upstairs, from the back window. And uh, he was trying to plug his generator into the GFC outlet from the backyard to power his house. And I was like, oh God, this, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Either he doesn't know what he's doing or, uh, or maybe he's a genius. But what I noticed was he had no power in his house. He has no light out, lights on his house. He eventually turned it off. He turned off the generator. I think he bought a generator. It was very quiet too. It wasn't very big. So I think he either realized that he had to uh, bring an extension cord into the house. I don't know how he was going to do that, but anyways, well, the fence, the post, there's two posts that are broken at the base. They're rotted out. So anyways, the guy, the guy pushed over the fence towards my side. That's all he did. He, yeah, I don't think he understands that it's going to blow over on his side again. And next time it's just going to blow completely over and fall down because I got literally two posts that are dry rot. It's a good neighbor fence. We share the, we share the fence line. We share the fence line. So one side is fence, the other side is, uh, it's like fence, not fence, fence on my side. And then on his side is fence, not fence on the opposite side. So we're sharing the, it's called a good neighbor fence. So what sucks for him is that he fenced off his whole backyard recently. So he put, he, he put a lot of money in there Unfortunately, put a lot of money in there, so that's probably why he doesn't. It's probably why he doesn't want to uh, do anything right now. <laughs> you know. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video here. See y'all later. Bye.